Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with Kazakhstan. Uh, next episode, Geography Now. Uh, don't know much about Kazakhstan. I know where you guys are pretty much located, but other than that, don't really know a whole lot about you guys, but obviously I'm going to know a lot more now. And so, yeah, really cool. Uh, before we do, uh, I, actually, I also do, like, you know, war and history videos. Like, right now I'm doing Hannibal, like, versus Rome. So if you should definitely check out that series. Also got a bunch of other cool kind of history series out. So definitely check those out on, on the playlist. But anyways, guys, we're on the Kazakhstan. Remember, doing every country alphabetical order. So... Here we are, Kazakhstan, you're next, you're up. Let's see what you guys have to offer. Let's check out all the cool, interesting things about your country. <laughs> all right, let's get to it. Like and subscribe, guys. It'd be pretty awesome if you did. Also, that join button, but I don't really expect anyone to do that. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. Three, don't worry, I said full screen, full screen. Uh, three, two, one, bam. Guys, no, I'm not gonna do a Borat impression, okay? That movie didn't even have a single Kazakh person in it. They filmed the Kazakhstan part in a gypsy village in Romania, and Sasha Baron Cohen was speaking Hebrew half the time. It did, however, boost their tourism by like tenfold, so there's that. Wait, did it really? It's I haven't seen the movie, geography. so. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. Today we cover our first Central Asian country. Uh... Well, I mean, doesn't Afghanistan kind of count? <laughs> doesn't Afghanistan kind of Yeah, 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 yeah. Kazakhstan is cool because it's like the country that melts both Europe and East Asia together in a very unique way. You can even kind of tell just by looking at the people. It's like they look kind of Asian, but then you're not sure because some of them have like light Caucasian features. I feel you, Kazakhstan, I've been getting that my whole life. And how did it all happen? <laughs> well, it's partially to do with the location that they live in, which brings us to... Geography. Now, Turkey may be the bridge between Europe and Asia, if you consider the Middle East Asia, but Kazakhstan is like the bridge between Europe and East Asia. First of all, Kazakhstan is located mm -hmm. in Central Asia, surrounded by five other countries. So close to Mongolia, but a 20 mile wide corridor separates them, with a coast on the northeast sides of the Caspian Sea, where their only seaport, Aktau, is located. It is the world's largest landlocked country, ninth largest in the world at nearly 1 wow. million square kilometers. Like, seriously, the country's distance is like the same from London to Istanbul. Speaking of which, the longest road in Europe, the E40, extends over 5,300 miles, all the way from Calais, France to Ritter, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Huh. The country is divided into 14 regions, or Oblistar, with the capital Astana located in the Akmola region. Nonetheless, Almaty in the south is actually the largest city, with Skimkent rounding out number three. And all three of these cities have the busiest airports in Kazakhstan. Now, Kazakhstan was part of the former USSR prior to right. independence, so you see kind of like leftover disputes when it comes to territorial anomalies. Basically, it kind of went right. like this. Hello, I'm Gorbachev, and all you republics are relinquished from the USSR, which is not the USSR anymore, but just plain Russia. Oh, and it's the year 1990. Okay, but we have like mix-up communities so where do we draw the borders you wanted this you figure it out <laughs> the Kyrgyzstan <laughs> episode is gonna be so fun I promise in the Caspian Sea Kazakhstan has a little dispute with Russia over the marshy Ukantni Island as well as the Jeski and Malijem Chushni sandbanks known for being located above an offshore oil producing zone then we have that little yeah. dispute with Uzbekistan over the Vozrozhdenia Island which is now a peninsula due to the drying up of the Aral Sea the oh, only wow. other strange territorial anomaly would probably be the famous Baikonur Cosmodrome this is the site where the first launch of the first satellite Sputnik and the first manned orbital flight by Yuri Gagarin happened. Whoa. This place is leased to Russia until 2050 and today you will need a Russian visa if you want to visit unless you're lucky enough to score a guided tour. Yeah, in 1991 the Russians were like, all right Kazakhstan, you are your own country now. No more USSR, you're free. Wow, I get my own space? The Caspian Sea, the mines, the mineral fields, the grassland? Oh look, a space station! Ah, da, 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 da. That's still mine, that's still mine. Okay, fine, but remember, <laughs> you do owe me from all that nuclear testing we're doing on the east side. Now it's like the most radioactive thing on the planet. Semipalatinsk, look it up. I mean, when they built it, they didn't realize Kazakhstan would eventually secede, so yeah. Nonetheless, there are over 27,000 ancient monuments throughout Kazakhstan. Places of interest might include things like the Monument of Independence, the Pyramid of Peace and Harmony, the Isik Burial Mound with the Golden Man, the Soyuz 11 Memorial, Khan Shatur, the tallest tent in the world, okay. Baiterek Tower, Medu, the world's highest skating rink, Ascension Cathedral, Aristan Bab pretty. Mausoleum, the National Museum of Kazakhstan, the Museum of Folk Music, Fountain Circus, Koktobe Hill Recreational Center with rides and attractions, and a Beatles Mausoleum. Monument, Nur Astana what? Mosque, and the Triumphal Arch of Mangilik El. But just don't go to Semi Palatinsk, it's like worse than Chernobyl. Yeah, that was a hard blow to their land, which is otherwise pretty majestic. Which brings us to. I just want to say that's some pretty cool architecture you guys go, got going on there, man. 
Some sights to see there. Nice. Kazakhstan's landscape is kind of like an alternate universe Twilight Zone version of Mongolia. It's like kind of similar, but there's something a little off. First of all, the country is generally flat with massive steppes and plains like the Caspian Depression, the Turgai Valley, and the Kazakh Uplands, which compose the majority of the country's land makeup. In the east and southeast, you get the mountains along the Altai and Tian Shan ranges, the highest mountain being Khan Tengri, which again is like the Roraima of Central Asia as it acts as a tri-point border between them, China, and Kyrgyzstan. I don't know why China even bothered with it though. It's like, come on, you already have like half of Mount Everest. Why take parts of other countries' tallest peaks? I know, right? <laughs> Otherwise, numerous rivers cross the country, the longest one being the Irtysh River, which flows through the Northeast, shared with Russia and China, dangerously close to the radioactive fallout from Semipalatinsk. However, the Ishim River is more important as it passes through the capital, Astana. Then you get the strange largest lake, Bakhash, because the western half of it is fresh water and the east is salt water. Strange, huh? And that's not even half the strange. Then you have things like the Valley of Balls, <laughs> Valley. What? Strange spherical eroded boulders averaging around three to four meters wide. You have this strange submerged forest, Tamgali Gore. I see it like, hold on, we're we, 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 the ball. There we go. And that is pretty cool. I mean, obviously, but Mises said balls, like, is, has, has any one of these, like, kind of like rolled down a hill and killed somebody? I could see that totally happening, you know, just a random, I don't know, like a storm or something. I don't know. And one gets loose or someone leaned on one. And, Pushed it down the hill and crush, crush somebody. Probably not though, right? That'd be interesting to know. That. <laughs> Anyways, back to the show. Boulders oh, averaging yeah. around three to four meters wide. You have this strange submerged forest, Tamgali cool. Gorge, Chardon Canyon, and the most notable natural landmark, nice. the Drying Aral Sea. It was made by diverting water in the former Soviet times, and now you can see a strange post-apocalyptic setting with rusting abandoned ships and Earth. sea vessels in a dry grassland as Bactrian camels. I've heard about, like, I've seen some kind of, excuse me, it was just some kind of documentary. But that just was really cool. I guess all that is just like laying there. I mean, it's probably not worth anything. So like, there's no point, I guess, in dragging it off. But man, imagine having like a lakeside home. Like, you, grew, you grew up and you have this nice lakeside home. And then you're passing it down to your children. You're in the great, you know, just keeps getting passed down all of a sudden. Like the next person, the grandkids, are like, uh, so much for the dock, you know, it leads to nowhere. It's all sand. I don't know. That would suck, though, man. If you had a house around the lake, and now it's near no lake. Anyways. Animals graze quietly in the distance. By the way, if you are part of an alternative rock band, this is like the perfect place to make a location shoot for an album cover. Anyway, Kazakhstan yeah, is. is loaded with natural resources. About 100 of the elements on the periodic table can be found mined in Kazakhstan. Wow. They take 12th place in oil reserves and they are in the top 20 of gas reserves, most of which centered around the 970 square mile Tengiz oil field, which is one of the largest in the world, making it the country's largest export oil, which in return makes them the largest mm -hmm. economy in Central Asia as they hold about 60% of the entire region's GDP. Wildlife is actually quite prevalent. You have voles, gray herons, bats, pygmy cormorants, wolves, foxes, stoats, marbled polecats, saiga antelopes, and the two national animals, the snow leopard and the golden step eagle. Cool, However, nice. the horse is probably the most important animal. It's been said that the horse was probably first tamed and domesticated in Kazakhstan. Eh, debatable. The horse also plays into food. There's a joke that Kazakhs are the second largest meat eaters in the world, the first being wolves. Ha! Challenge accepted. The national dish being <laughs> beshbarmak, literally translated as five fingers because you're supposed to eat it with your hands. It's noodles with horse meat on top. Yes, they eat horse. However, the rule is you do horse? not eat the horse you ride. Stop copying me. It's also said that apples originated in Kazakhstan. The name of the city Almaty actually translates to the place of many apples. You can even find nice. many wild apple trees and forests all across Kazakhstan. Otherwise, Kazakhstan does pretty well at staying afloat. I mean, they became the first former Soviet nation to receive a positive global investment ranking in 2002. They paid off all their debt to the IMF. Nonetheless, all that forward moving does come with a little bit of backstory and a tincture of controversy, which brings us to... Now, I personally love meeting ethnic Kazakh people because I feel like they could totally pass as my siblings that were separated from me at birth. It's weird. They've got just that beautiful mixture of Asian and Europe. First of all, the country has about 18.1 million people and has about six people per square kilometer. The country is about 67% ethnically Kazakh, whereas about 20% are Russians, and the rest are made up of other groups, mostly Turkic peoples like Uzbeks, Uyghurs, and other groups like Chechens, Ukrainians, Tartars, and Poles. They use the Kazakhstani tenge as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, 
talk about the largest indigenous people group. What exactly is a Kazakh? Well, today that question is a lot harder to answer than what it may have been a thousand years ago. In the shortest way, Kazakhs are classified as a Turkic people group, not Turkish, Turkic, there's a difference, in which they share the same linguistic structure as many other countries and people groups across Asia and Europe. I found this video hosted by Aisulu from the channel Gilo Team, which they do a great job explaining. Check it out. Kazakhs and Turks are both Turkish nationalities. The reason why they look differently is that Turks are both Turkish and Turks are both Turkish and Kazakhs are both Kipchak. Kipchak and Turks are still in Asia, and Turks and Turks migrated to Anatolia. Kipchak and Turks were forced to the Mongol Empire, so we look like Mongoloid. Kazakhs look like Chinese, speaking Islam and speaking on Russian language. Awesome video, right? This creates a whole new unique kind of populace that looks like an entire nation of biracials, kind of like what happened with Brazil with the Parto people. Nonetheless, most of Kazakhstan is kind of actually at a cultural crossroads. More people speak Russian than the actual native Kazakh language. Yep, I feel you. Nonetheless, the president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, who has been their only president since independence and has a little bit of controversy, like when he held a snap election in 2015 after being accused of human rights violations, just announced that in the next few years, Kazakhstan will be switching over from using the Cyrillic alphabet to the Latin one, some saying this being a subtle move to Kazakhify their country. Wait, what did you say about the president? Eh, just look it up, we don't have time. As a Turkic country, Kazakhs are related to and can kind of understand the speech of their other Turkic neighbors that extend as far as the frozen Arctic tundras of Northeast Russia to the Black Sea with Turkey and the Gagauz people in that strange autonomous unit in Moldova. Moldova is gonna be a fun episode, trust me. It's like a place where people don't care if everything is burning to the ground, they just dance through it. Anyway, obviously <laughs> we don't have time to get into the full history of Kazakhstan, but in the quickest way I can put it, Scythians, Turkic speaking Mongol tribes arrive, Huns invade, Arabic Karakhanid Turks come in and introduce Islam, tribal powers fight for control, Khitians invade, Timur Ilang builds an empire, Kazakhs break away from the Uzbek Khanate, Zungar people invade, Russians come in and help, then the Russians kind of take over and rule them, Khan Kene revolts against Russians unsuccessfully, sons of new <laughs> Russians and Ukrainians flock in to work, Kazakhs resist military draft in World War One. they become an autonomous republic in the USSR, Russian influence for decades, independence in 1991, capital is moved, sons of new Kazakhs migrate back to Kazakhstan and ethnic Russians move out, making Kazakhs a majority in their own country again, Nazarbayev becomes their only president, a bunch of oil gas pipeline controversy, and here we are today. Now when it comes to culture, Kazakhstan is okay. quite unique. For one, the majority at around 64% identify at least nominally as Muslim. However, in 1990, President Nazarbayev actually created a separate mufiate for the Kazakh Muslims. He forbade religious political parties and removed Kazakhstan from the authority of the Muslim Board of Central Asia. This decreed Kazakhstan right. as a secular state, even though the government kind of puts strict control on all religious communities. This makes Kazakhstan the only Central Asian country whose constitution does not assign special status to Islam. And apart from certain areas with mosques, you wouldn't even really notice it too much, especially in the booming cities. This is because Kazakhstan's culture is way more Turkic and Mongol derived than stereotypical Middle East Arab Muslim derived. There are people of wanderers, nomads, some people even still live in yurts in the countryside. Oh geez, really, again? During celebrations, you can see people wearing traditional costumes, playing traditional step folk music. By the way, they celebrate three different New Year's, Gregorian, Nari's Spring Equinox, and the Julian calendar. They have so many horse related festivals and games like pick up the napkin and steal the woman on a horse and if you can't, she gets to beat you with a whip game. Aside from all that, Kazakhs are known for excelling in sports like weightlifting, cycling, and ice hockey. Is that a thing? <laughs> She's a whip thing, wow. That is funny. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be fun to see. All right with a whip game. Aside from all that, Kazakhs are known for excelling in sports like weightlifting, cycling, and ice hockey. Some notable people from Kazakhstan. Ice hockey, yes, I've definitely heard you guys are doing pretty well in ice hockey. You know, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Canadian, so definitely a plus. Gotta love every country that, you know, likes hockey. So definitely props to you guys. All that, Kazakhs are known for excelling in sports like weightlifting, cycling, and ice hockey. Mm -hmm. Some notable people from Kazakhstan might include people like cyclist Alexandre Vinokurov, Sabina Altinbekova, Timur Bekmambetov, Gennady Golovkin, Denis Ten, Abai Kunambayuli, Ken Alibek, Abilai Khan, Olja Sulemenov, Marat Zhlambayev, and Shukrat Mitalipov. At least those are the people you guys, the Kazakh geography people, mentioned to me. I literally have no idea who most of those people are. So basically, with Kazakhstan, you get this strange land of East Asian, European mixed kind of nominally Muslim people that speak Russian. Russian that love to ride and eat horses. Yeah, sounds like people I'd hang with. And let's find out who else thinks the same in... <laughs> Friendzone.
Kazakhstan is like the kingpin big brother of Central Asia. If you want to talk to any of the other former Soviet republics, you usually got to start here first. Now, they generally get along with other Turkic and Russian speaking countries. However, Central Asia is kind of like the Balkans, which it's like a family with a bit of dysfunction. Turkmenistan is like the angry brother that isolates himself, and Uzbekistan is like the angry brother that argues with all the other brothers. Kyrgyzstan is like the little brother that they love, but they keep asking them for money. Tajikistan is like the distant cousin that speaks a Persian based language. Turkey, Mongolia, and South Korea are like far away distant and close friends that share the same Turkic and Mongoloid history and culture as well. They've established great trade deals. Tons of Koreans seem to love moving to Kazakhstan. The US was the first place to recognize them as a state Aww. after independence and they've been jumping in on investments. But when it comes to their best friends, most Kazakh people I've talked to have said Russia. Although certain seasons of controversy have existed, overall Russia has not only been close in customs unions, they and Belarus share a free trade agreement, but in almost every other level of diplomacy, they get That's along cool. well. They both speak Russian, they both love Russian food and TV shows, and even even though Kazakhstan is trying to wean itself off the Russian influence to resurge a more Kazakh identity, they can't help but cling on to certain aspects Aww. that were so deeply ingrained in their history from the Russians. In conclusion, Kazakhstan is a country. That's that's cool that you know you guys you know you're so close to Russia and there's no like like drama there. So that's really cool, you know, that you got both you guys are able to kind of get along and you know kind of care for each other. So that's really cool to hear. Aspects that were so deeply ingrained in their history from the Russians. In conclusion, Kazakhstan is a country that is full of East Asian mixed, horse loving, Muslim majority identifying, Russian speaking, government controversifying, but moving forward with resource extracting country. That was a fun episode. Kazakh can stand all the wonderful info we just learned. Can't you? That was so horrible. That was. The I think that's the worst pun I've ever made in this entire series. Stay tuned. I Kenya so too. is coming up next. Oh man! Wow. Well, there you have it, guys. Kazakhstan. Like, I knew you guys were like a big country, but like, I didn't realize how big when I, like they compared you guys to Europe. So that was really cool. And yeah, the, the, a lot of cool sights to see, and a lot of cool people who you know just you know want their identity away from Russia. So definitely a uh, another great episode from Geography Now. If you're from there or live there, please uh, comment below. Always like to see us. Hear from people who have you know been here, been there, or lived there. I think that's also really cool. And yeah, I uh, hope you guys uh, like this video. Please hit that like and subscribe, and please check out the other playlists. You know, for like history and stuff. They're really cool and very interesting. But anyway, guys, you guys have a great day, great night. You guys are awesome. Love you. Catch you guys in future videos. Peace.